Welcome back to the program. There are four finalists lining up for the South Island Farmer of the Year. Craig McKenzie, along with wife Roz, are one of that little group. I found out from him that it really is all about them and innovation. I started looking at precision agriculture in two, after 2008 when I was away on a Nuffield scholarship and couldn't see how we could make uh, significant gains in what we were doing any other way, but uh, saw precision agriculture as a way to be able to go forward and and make some um, major advances in yield, but also environmental benefits. Um, so what do you call precision agriculture? What, how do you define it? Uh, I guess it's about putting the right product in the right place at the right time and in the right way. So what are you doing now? Um, we're using a range of techniques, but uh, we're using green seeker, so we're crop sensing and then making in-season crop uh, decisions. But we're also, we started off using yield maps, but any of these maps are only as good as um, wallpaper if you haven't got a way of dealing with them. So data management was, was a key thing for us, um, so we can use either a yield map or a, or a green seeker map or, a, or an EM map as well. So electromagnetic mapping of some of the fields picking up different soil types. So this is putting what nutrients where it's needed and not where it's not? Pretty much, yeah. It's um, looking at what the crop requires. Um, well, there's been some man-made issues. Some of that's been around lime spreading too much in some places and too little in others. And that creates problems with micronutrients. So that gave us the ability to be able to scan fields, work out what's happening, and then come back and apply accordingly within those individual zones. Sometimes it might be less than 20% of the field that needs to be treated. You're talking broad acre at the moment. What about dairy farms? Yeah, the dairy farm, we're, we've got involved there as well. We're mapping, just started mapping where the effluent goes versus where it doesn't, and we'll apply nutrients accordingly. Uh, build a prescription map and then just put, the, put, the, uh, put it into the back of the screen, run a variable rate controller on the spreader, and away you go. So it'll put, say, 100 kilograms in one place and 20 in another, or whatever it might be. This is an example. What do you learn from that? Well, this is about watching what our traceability is. And, and as you can see here, this is where the centre pivot comes around. Effluent is spread from from here underneath the centre pivot right out through to here. And through the season, we're getting some variability. And some of that may be where it stop starts. It's got a spreader underneath it, um, and it's moved from tower to tower. So but you can see in, in this area here, initially, it's quite dark. But when you can see it here, there's a change between the centre of where the machine goes and where the effluent has probably been spread here. So this is quite high in concentrations of, of effluent and nutrient source. So we would be spreading our fertiliser going this way. So we'd start at a low rate, change through these zones, build a prescription map, and then get to this bit and say, well, we don't need any here, so let's turn off. Maybe a little bit there and come out the other side, and then we start again. So this, these green seeker maps are giving us the ability to do on-the-go variable rate fertiliser and not put anything where we don't need it. So it's giving us a really good accurate assessment of, of what our nutrients are. So where did you get the gear from? Um, it's a mostly American technology um, and it's been adapted to fit with what's happening in New Zealand. It's not only about nitrogen, so we're using it for lots of other things, but most, mostly the gear comes out of the US. And you would be, if I may be so bold, one of the leaders in it as far as New Zealand is concerned? Um, I don't know, yeah, I guess so. We're, we're interested in some of this new stuff and just look, trying to look forward and see where we can go and be more efficient. So where to from here? Because you've, you've got a business doing it now. Yeah, well, we've um, started a, a small precision ag company, AgriOptics New Zealand Limited, and, and we wanted to be able to manage data, provide equipment, so we're also working with the Trimble dealers on the Grain Seeker and the Weed Seeker products. So we want to be able to incorporate all those things together if we can. Family business. Yeah, it's um, important for us, uh, it's family succession and just because we're farming doesn't mean to say the kids have to come home and farm, they can do whatever they like, but uh, Gemma was very interested in precision agriculture, having done a degree at university and spent some time in Colorado, at Colorado State, so it was a nice opportunity to be able to, uh, for her to come home and, and join the team in, in the agri-optics company. Where are we at as far as educating people at the very top level in New Zealand? Probably struggling a little bit in precision ag. Um, so currently the universities are looking at maybe being able to uh, join together, both Massey and Lincoln, and, and uh, hopefully be able to provide some precision ag students and graduates coming out. So we certainly need them, otherwise we're relying on international people and it doesn't necessarily fit with what we do. So as far as you're concerned, it's, it's farming in the sort of the next century almost. <laughs> Somewhat, I guess. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting times and, and it's good fun. Um, it's not, not work when it's good fun, is it? And as far as the sort of general farming, what, what are your increases been like? They've been 
more, it's more about profitability. We've increased in some zones, but some zones in those fields are, have been costing us money. So for us, it was about turning every zone into a profitable zone. So it's not only about increasing yield, it's about increasing profitability as well as being able to minimise our impact on the environment and not put nutrients where we don't need them. So we can protect waterways and groundwater quality and things like that. Sustainable is a very much a sort of a buzzword at the moment, but you've actually gone beyond that. Um, it's pretty much what we're, what we're doing, I guess. Um, it's, yeah, it, it is what we want to be, is sustainable. Um, the land is our bank, we want to make sure that going forward we can uh, leave it in a better state than what we found it uh, for the next generation or whoever wants to farm it next. But, um, so we're very interested in being able to be intensive, be able to have high yields but also uh, be very much environmentally sustainable. That um, thing on the motorbike, weed seeker, what, what, yeah, what's well, a weed seeker? <laughs> <laughs> well weed seeker has been designed to be able to go across in a broad acre situation and, and take um, weeds out of uh, as maybe a fallow background or in gravel and it's used in around cities and parkways and things like that. But um, we've turned it around to where we've, uh, to make it turn off where it should turn on and on where it should turn off. So we now have come up with a process where we can put nitrogen in between urine patches on dairy pastures or any pasture for that matter um, and not, not on them. So potentially a 30% saving in nitrogen. Um, there's also an opportunity to be able to cut down in nitrous oxide emissions by 30%, uh, nitrate leaching minimum minimising that as well as uh, environmentally, or all the environmental side of it, but also the economic side for the farmers. So it's pretty exciting. Um, it's one of those nights when you can't sleep that you come up with some of these things, but um, yeah, we're pretty pretty excited about that. What are you going to do with that technology? Um, we're just getting some, some scientific data behind it at the moment, and once we've got that, we're ready to launch that into the market. So hopefully that's uh, potentially the first time that's been done in the world, so we can look for international markets.